Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to another uh, tutorial. So I've gotten some recent complaints about the scaling in the node graph here, that people can't read the nodes that I'm using uh, because it's either too tiny or blurry. I've changed some recording settings here. <clears throat> um, I changed the resolution of my monitor. I have an ultra-wide monitor, so I just changed the resolution to 1920 by 1080, and that's what I'm recording in. And I also increased the... Uh, the uh, the uh, the outputs uh, when I'm building it out to a much higher quality. So we'll see how that works. Just let me know uh, in the comments. And uh, I'm just going to make a quick video just so we can test these new settings as well as just talk about something else in Gaia. So I'm going to delete all these. And let's throw in some other things here that uh, I really like playing around with. And believe it or not, it's actually the gradient right here. And I've played with the gradients in the past couple times, but you can make some really cool things with them, like uh, cliff faces and stuff like that. Things that are really hard to make in a top-down um, height map, or yeah, like a height map program like Gaia. Uh, but you can make the cliffs in Gaia and then export your landscape from Gaia to a different program like Mudbox or ZBrush or whatever it is that is available out there now, maybe Blender. And you can carve out your um, your cliffs in greater detail, but you can make them here using this. But that's just one example. We're not going to do that today. What I want to do is I just want to show you guys what the Shaper node does. So let's go ahead and add two of these gradients. And we're going to combine them, but before we do that, we got to change the direction of this one. So we got to change this to 180. So now that they are complete opposites of each other, and let's go ahead and combine them. And I can't remember which combine method it is, but I think it's screen. Yeah, and then you got to increase the ratio all the way, and then throw in an invert. And that'll make a little U shape. That's cool. All right, so that's what kind of like what we want. Then on the invert node, go ahead and hit the level button. And that'll just auto level it. So now we have this U shape. And you can make a lot of cool stuff with this. Uh, I've made quite a few things that I quite liked when using this shape. Uh, but now I want to throw in the shaper node. So let's go ahead and throw in shaper. And we'll show you what it does. So by default, it doesn't really do anything because we haven't changed anything here. It's at a 0% here, so it's not increasing or decreasing on either side. But I like using this U shape to show it off because if you use it on a landscape with a lot of features, it's just a little bit harder to see what it's actually doing. But if we use this shape, it's easier to see it. So let's go ahead and decrease the shaper node all the way. And you can kind of see how it's pushing in the edges down here. It's making a really s sharp peak. And then it does the exact opposite all the way on the other side. It makes it more like this rounded square shape. So that's you can kind of see how this can come in handy when you have to kind of reshape your landscape to bring in peaks uh, maybe dependent on height. You can make your peaks really spiky. Uh, you can turn on the local effect and you can kind of see what that does there. You can maintain the fine details if you have some fine details you need to maintain so that's pretty nice there as well. You can increase and decrease the local effect to kind of fill in everything. That's kind of like more of our um, base object that we had. You increase that. Now we have like these little beveled edges over here. Uh, the detail size, that depends on how much detail you have here. We don't really have anything, so we don't have to worry about that. So that's kind of like what the, the shaper does. And so let's put it into a more practical sense. Uh, let's use mountain. And we're just going to plug this right into shaper. We're going to delete all this. We don't need those anymore. But Please play around with the gradients. The gradients are very highly underutilized, and I, they are really nice. You can get a lot of cool stuff with them. All right, so we're going to go through the seeds here until we find a really, okay, that's what we're looking for. A really, I was going to say a really peak-looking shape. And now if we apply Shaper, it's more of this Mesa-looking shape. And if we were to decrease it, now we have a really sharp peak. We can get some really interesting shapes using this. And let's go ahead and enable the local effect. And you can see what we're getting there. And if you were to think of a mesa in this sense, you can get some really interesting shapes. This is more like a little nipple or something. Um, 
let's take off the local effect and let's increase it all the way. Uh, maybe not all the way. We want to maintain some other details in the actual shape up here. So if we check maintain fine details, you can see what that's doing for us. Just maintaining some of those details. And we're just going to decrease this until we get maybe something more like that where we have some details on the top and on the sides. And let's add terrace. And terrace just does exactly what terrace says it does. It just adds these terraces. And I like using the residual terrace option because it puts in these terraces broken up by noise and it's not being applied everywhere. It gives it more of a random uh, effect. And you can just change the seat of that around till you find what you like. We can do a soft fall off. So instead of having a nice hard fall off in between the terraces, we have more of a soft fall off. And we can also reprocess those if we so choose. There we go. But I think I'm going to keep this default these default settings, just checking these and then changing it to reprocess. And I'm going to fill it in with a stratify. And you might say, well, that's kind of redundant. You have these terraces and now the stratify. But what stratify does is we have our terraces made right here. And then stratify actually stratifies the actual noise inside the terraces. So it's just not adding more steps. And I'm just going to increase the substrata just to kind of give it a more soft tone like that and then I'm also going to just decrease the strength by about half from the original value maybe even a little bit more and there we go so that way we just kinda add a little more stratification everywhere and uh, we can call that good I was also asked to do more desert scenes so this could be your first basic mesa if you wanted we can I will get into more advanced stuff later down the road. I like to start with basics so people who are first learning the program or first find it can kind of understand the basics of what we're doing and then they can kind of play into more intermediate and advanced things. So I like to start out with a lot of basic stuff first. All right, and then as usual, we're going to put in some breaker here. Breaker will give us some nice, awesome cracks in our landscape. Um, and we're not going to get a whole lot with the default values, which is what I usually keep because I don't necessarily want to completely break up the entire landscape the way I that the way that it's like intended to do. So um, we're going to need to throw in a little bit more than what we get from default. So I'm just going to go ahead and increase the duration just a tad bit. It doesn't have to be a whole lot, and I it's probably we're probably going to have to add more than 110 here, but. That, yeah, we're probably going to have to add something more like uh, maybe 220. Yeah, there we go. That's starting to look a little bit more like what we want. Let's do it one more time. 440. Okay, that's that's looking pretty good. This crack right here is a little bit too much. Can't really help that in some cases, but you can kind of see the overall shape we're starting to get with Breaker. And with Breaker being used, we're going to go ahead and increase the resolution to 1K because we want to see how the higher resolution Breaker node is going to look on our landscape with such a high duration. I guess it's not like an extremely high duration, but higher than default. And as any of you guys may know, um, a lot of the nodes inside of Gaia or any of, really any of these node-based programs are all dependent on resolution. So what might look good at 0.5K might not look good at 1K. And as you can see here, the resolution increased. Not only does the stratify come in a lot more, but so does the breaker. So at 1K, I think we have too much of this breaker going on. So let's go ahead and decrease that by half again, and we'll see what it looks like at 220 instead of 420 or 440. I like some of the smaller details we're getting in from that stratify. It looks pretty good. So I think 220 is going to be good. Um, the stratify node that we have on there is going to be fine because we're actually going to erode this terrain even more. So let's go ahead and um, add some more erosion. And I like to use fold, but in this case, we don't really have to use fold. There's not a whole lot of terrain folding that occurs like on mesas or these like plateau kind of areas. So we're going to go ahead and just add straight up erosion. And we might play around with the default settings a bit depending on what we get. And I think we're going to have to because it, we kind of lost a lot of the detail that we wanted inside of our like little mesa that we're making. And this is a very basic mesa. It's not 
by any means the most exceptional one but again it, like I said I just this is more of a basic tutorial for those who are just starting out so let's go ahead and decrease the duration of the erosion so it doesn't last as long and therefore we still get erosion but we don't lose a lot of our details and if that's not going to be enough for us which it looks like it's going to be but we still have a lot of stratification down here that we want to get rid of. So this was before we added the erosion and this is after. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and increase the erosion duration to four again, but in decrease the rock softness. So the rocks are a little bit harder and let's go ahead and change the uh, process mode to hybrid. Let's go ahead and apply that. There we go. I think that works out a little bit better. What we could also try doing before we add this erosion, um, and I really like these smaller details that we're getting down here with the stratifier being down there, we can throw in a thermal. And there's a lot of thermal weathering that occurs in the desert on a lot of the objects that are created or, you know, that nature creates in the desert. So let's add a thermal weathering real quick. And let's go ahead and just align these up. I like keeping my work node graph really clean. And what the thermal weathering is going to do is it's going to give us these awesome sediment deposits all over the place, which we really want because a lot of thermal weathering and wind erosion occurs and a lot of the sediment will kind of flow downwards. But I, what I want to do is decrease the anisotropy if you decrease the anisotropy, what it's going to do is we're going to still get these uh, these patterns of de uh, sediment falling down, but we're going to have more of the rock coming in. And they'll create these little taluses that build up at the bottom of the rock a lot better, um, a lot more realistically than if you were to increase the anisotropy a lot, and then you just lose out on a lot of detail on your rocks like that. It could still look really good in some situations, but in this situation, we want more rock than we do sediment, even though there's still a lot of sediment. We just want the rock to be more prominent. And I think this right here will do pretty well. If you wanted to do something about this basic shape to kind of change it around so it's not so square um, or circular, you go back to the stratify. Right after the stratify, add a displace. Or you can do it after Shaper, actually. You can do it after the Shaper and change it to Rugged. And you can increase the complexity, change it to high quality a bit. And now you've kind of changed the shape around, increase the strength. And now you've got something more like this, where the overall shape isn't as uniform. It's a little bit more random. And then you can just connect that to the terrace. It'll change the terrace around, especially in the uh, re the uh, residual option. And then you add the stratify, and then the breaker, and then so on and so forth. So that's what you can do if you wanted to change the overall shape around so it's not so uniform. Just in case anybody was wondering. Uh, the displace node is really good at making sure you add a little bit of randomness to your overall shape in your terrain. And then you get these cool little hoodoos that pop up on the edge like you would normally find in the desert and a lot of mesa places. So let's go and see our erosion. Looks alright. And then our thermal erosion. Let's go ahead and look at that. That's looking pretty good. And now since we have these two erosions here, we need to combine them so that we can get the best of both worlds. Uh, before we do that, if you look in here in the sediments from the thermal erosion, it's really flat and boring. Increase the debris size, and then you'll see these sediment deposits actually fill up with sediments, as you can see there. Just adds like a nice little noise to it, makes it look a little bit more natural. Just be careful with that because at higher resolutions, they start to really populate and are really easy to see, and then it doesn't look as realistic. So. I found that anywhere between 10 and 15 is a good realm to be in when you're using the debris size at higher resolutions. Um, but I mean, it's all up to you and your tastes. You can do whatever you want, obviously. 
All right, so let's go ahead and add these together with a combine. We're not actually going to add them. What we're going to do is we're going to just do a regular 50-50 blend. That's all we're going to do. So we have that, we have that, and then this is what we get in the end. So if you were to look at it with just pure erosion, we get a lot of weird stretching. And if you look at thermal, we get a lot of softness coming in. And then when we combine the two, we get a little bit of both, and it looks overall much better than it did before. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, just texture this up real quick. So literally, we're going to use texture right there. We're going to use two of them. And we're also going to use a slope. And what we want to do is we want to attach the slope to the output here. And we don't need to attach the output to anything just yet, but we will. And what we want to do with this slope is we want to select the very flat areas, but also some of the steeper areas, not much. And I find that 60% is usually pretty good uh, when you need to just select a little bit of the steeper areas, especially on uh, very vertical landscapes like this. Let's attach that to the mask of this texture. And then we're just going to attach both textures to the combined node. And then we're going to combine the two textures together using a blend. Actually, you don't even have to use the mask on this texture. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's delete that. That's going to have to rebuild. The texture node does take a long time to build. It does a lot of processing. So just keep that in mind because you don't want to like continually change that around because it's just going to take a lot of time to do that and you got better things to do than wait for nodes to build out. So let's just go ahead and find some colors that we like. And this is my favorite part of any terrain creation is the texturing. I really like it. We're going to attach a... Oops, it's going to do this to me. So let's do a sat map. There we go. And that's actually a pretty good, decent color to start with. We might have to swap them around depending on where we want this orange to come out. Um, I should learn not to do that after it fails once. Set map. And that's not even half bad either. But we're going to go ahead and choose a more brown color. I think we're going to do the brown rocky color. Uh, which one is this one? Which one are we using here? We are using 102. So let's change this to 102. This will be our slope areas. So we want an orange look to it. And then for this texture right here, we're going to change the seed. Because we have the same seed on both, I do believe. Or we did. We don't need more. We increase this by one. And we want to just make sure that both textures are different from each other, just so we get different details in certain areas. Just takes a minute to build. All right. 36, 96, and that was okay. So they're completely different. All right. Just wanted to make sure that that was known. Those just make sure the textures are slightly offset, so that you don't com you don't compete with other selections in the texture. Now you're going to take this slope, and you're going to connect it to a mixer. You're going to connect both of these in. Change the option, the method, the blend, and change it to 100%. And this slope is going to connect to the mask of the mixer. And what that'll do is it'll mask out this slope selection in the mixer, or it should anyways. Yes, it does. So that'll be, we're using the same color, so it's not going to do much for us. So we got to change one around. So let's change this one to something that kind of blends still, but isn't the same. Like that, maybe. There we go. So you have this orange color is all dependent on this slope right there. And that'll go into the mask of the mixer. And that way you can have these two things blended together to get this, which looks a lot better. Um, but that still might not make sense because this is more of a light sand color and it's kind of fading down into an orange. So let's change this around just even a bit more. Let's find, let's like try 114 right there and we'll try 101 here. 
So those are very similar, but still different. There you go, and those are more like a purple mesa, which might not really make sense in some places. In Utah, most definitely not. So that's 119. What I really like is finding two colors that are very similar, but very different. So like 159 and 160 are different, but similar. So we got this right here, and then this one right here is just like it's kind of burnt. And when you combine the two, that's kind of like what you get. And that looks decent, but I think the colors are just a little bit too uh, vivid for what we want, or at least for what I want. And this one and this one are pretty similar, so 173 and 174. This one right here looks better as maybe a sand, and that looks better as maybe a rock. So we'll use this one as 173, and this one right here will be 174. And there we have it. And you can just kind of play around with it back and forth just to kind of see uh, what you like. And you just keep going. But essentially, that's all you're doing. And you can add more selections if you want. You don't have to stick with uh, just the slope. You have a whole data set. That looks really good. I like the way that looks quite a bit. But you have a whole data map, like tool set here you can use. So you have protrusion. You can throw ahead, go ahead and throw in some protrusion here. And what this will do is it'll just select the protrusions, the rock protrusions, essentially. And you can select those separately from each other. Throw that into a sat map. And uh, just make another mixer node. Keep it as blend, set it to 100, connect it to there, and then connect the mask to the protrusion. And now you've got what you went from this, where you have like this light rock selection, to a more brown rock selection right here, but you kept the overall color here. All you did was select the protrusions, the, the rocks. And you can change this around to be a really interesting color, like maybe that. That's my alarm. I apologize. So now you went from this, where you have this light rock selection, to a more dark rock selection. Now it just overall gives it a different look. You can even throw in something red, make it look like you have bleeding rocks. There you go. That looks pretty cool too. And uh, it's like your imagination is your limit here. You can just do whatever you want. But that's essentially all you're going to do. And then this is what you've built out right here. So you start out with mountain shaper to get this shape. And then you used a terrace or displace, depending on whichever direction you're taking this. Um, let me fix that up so it's straight. It's bothering me. There we go. Uh, and then you just stratified it, or terraced it, stratified it, broke it apart, eroded it, and combined it together to get this overall shape. And it didn't take a whole lot of nodes here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nodes. That's all it took to make the landscape, and you have about the same for texturing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. About the same for texturing. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's a very easy, uh, very easy landscape to make, and the shaper node is extremely uh, versatile. And if you want to change the overall shape again, all you have to do is just come over here and just change it to something else. You don't have to go through and add different nodes everywhere. You just change that one shaper node to make what you want, and now you've got something that's slightly different. We can just go through and see how this is going to build out. Break. And you just, you know, you just go through there and change one slider and you get a whole different shape. That's, that's why the shaper node is so versatile and super nice. You just get just one easy node. Just changes everything. We're just going to look at the combine here on how it looks total combined. Doesn't look half bad. Let's go ahead and look at Mixer. And there we go. We got like this dark red rock. That looks fairly interesting. And all it t took was changing one little node. So anyways, if you have any questions on how to further use the Shaper node, or if you want to see other videos, um, or different tutorial types, please uh, be sure to leave them in the comments section below. Let me know how this video looked for all of you, uh, if it looked better, if the 
node graph was crisper and cleaner for you to read and understand. I apologize for those who watched and couldn't see and voiced your concerns. I literally only changed one thing, and that was the video output settings, but apparently um, I have been completely incorrect on that, and it's just harder to read overall, uh, despite me not really changing my resolution. So, uh, anyways, leave the uh, leave your comments below. Let me know if it looks better. And uh, go ahead and use the Shaper node. It's badass. All right, thank you. Bye.